So today the plan is to put all the joists for the roof up and then block in between them, frame out the side overhang, and then hopefully start sheathing it. That's a lot to do. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the joists because they're gonna be at like an 11.2 degree angle or something. So we're gonna cut the ends so that they're not all cattywampus when we put that joist up there. So they're perpendicular to the earth. And then we'll start putting them up. We gotta put top plates up actually, and then we gotta do a little layout and then we should be done. Okay, let's get let's get going. And that's what we're gonna have to do to all of them. Is that cut them all like that? Yeah, pretty much. When Chelsea and my dad work on that, I'm gonna put this top plate up. So now I'm just going to do some layout up there, and I've got to do layout up there, and then I'll be done and we're ready to be putting joists up, so I'm going to get to it. In addition to adding that double top plate around the whole house, we also added the beveled top plate on top of that. That just allows the joist to bear on the full length of that top plate. If we didn't have that bevel on it, it would just sit on the corner, which would not be good enough and would not structurally be sound. You can either have a beveled top plate or you can get an adjustable uh, bracket that it sits on. However, those brackets didn't adjust to the right angle that we needed. The overhang on the west side of the building is going to be framed with eye joists as well. However, these joists are going to come out perpendicular to all the ones we've already put up. Because of this, we had to take one of our joists and put joist hangers on it for the perpendicular joists to sit in. I don't know if I can say joists enough. Because we had to put all those hangers on, we had to back those hangers up with two layers of half inch plywood on each side per the manufacturer. We basically made a giant beam out of this one joist. It was really heavy, 24 foot long, and it took a little while to get up there. It was pretty sketchy getting it up to a certain point, um, but I think we, we handled it pretty well, so. After we got the main joists up, we then went through and added blocking in between all of them. We first did this on the 8 foot wall because it was easiest to get to with the ladder. We went back later and did the 12 foot wall once we had sheathing up and we could actually get to it easily. This blocking is required because if we didn't have it and we just sheathed over top of it, if there was a load or any type of weight on top of the joist, they could just fall over and collapse on top of themselves.
We offset the sheets of OSB on the roof, that way the seams didn't line up vertically throughout the whole roof. That's a code requirement. We also used sheathing clips in between every rafter because the rafters were spaced more than 16 inches on center. So today we are hopefully going to continue working on the roof. Hopefully we can get it, at least the top part, all sheathed today. Um, and then hopefully finish up some of the sheathing on the side. That's a lot to ask for, but I think it's possible. So now we're done putting up all of these joists that go out that give us our overhang on the west side as you can see. So what we gotta do now is we're gonna block in between them all and then we're gonna sheath all this center section over, block in between those guys, finish that top section and then before we put the last sheets of sheathing on the roof we're gonna do this little section where we're gonna have a diagonal come out and then one come off of there and one come off of there, that diagonal. Same thing over here, we'll have a diagonal come out to where the corner is, one come off and one come off. We probably actually won't need one coming off this way. Once we got enough sheets down that we could safely block the top without feeling like we were going to fall off the edge of the roof, we then went through and blocked the top. From the time that we started putting on the roof to now, it's been about two or three weeks. We spent those weeks out of town because it was the holidays, it's the end of December. But we finally got a nice day at the beginning of January where it's going to be up in the mid 40s to come and go work. So we're going to finish the roof. After we got the corners framed out, we went through with a circular saw and cut the top edge of the roof. That way it was all straight across.
We're not using a traditional 2 by fascia board in this case. Since we have the eye joists and they're already blocked, we don't need any structural material on the end holding them together. So we just opted to use zip sheathing along the end, that way we can make the end of those joists to the top of the roof completely waterproof. And then we're going to use a metal flashing that's like a C-channel that will fit over the top of the roof and then fit over the full fascia board and then connect to under the roof and that way you won't see any of those little waves in and out that you see on the zip sheathing. You'll just see that flat metal fascia. Thanks for watching guys. We have a couple more things we need to finish up on the first floor before we can start building second floor walls, but we'll get there pretty soon and we're super excited about that. So leave a comment below if you'd like and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of our build. So Well, I kind of still have to go. I'm scared. Let go. You can see the stuff from me.